This video is about sinusoidal modeling. That's where we model a scenario using a sine function or a cosine function. This is AP Precalculus Topic 3.7. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Example 1. Let f be a sinusoidal function. The graph y equals f is given in the xy plane. What is the period of f? The period of the function is the horizontal distance from peak to peak. However, these peaks are between the lines, so it's a little bit difficult to calculate. One period of this function also begins at zero and ends here at two. Therefore, the period is two. And the answer is B. Example two. Let g be a sinusoidal function g of x equals cosine of 2 times x plus c minus 1. The graph of y equals g of x is given in the xy plane. Which of the following values could represent the constant c? We have memorized that one period of the parent function y equals cosine theta looks like this. Since g of x has a positive a value, then one period of g of x will look just like the parent function. So it'll look like this. The beginning of the period is the phase shift, the first input value. So this period has a phase shift of negative pi over two. The c value is the opposite of the phase shift. So for the period that I have highlighted, the c value would be positive pi over two. And that is one of the options, so the answer is C. By contrast, the value of C could not be pi, because then the phase shift would be negative pi, which is right here. And a period that started here would be upside down compared to the parent function. That would have a negative A value, which we do not see. So the answer could not be D. The value of c cannot be pi over four because then the phase shift would be negative pi over four. That would be right in the middle right here. But one period starting at negative pi over four would be a sine function with a negative a value, not a cosine function. The value of c cannot be zero because then the phase shift would be zero, meaning that the period starts right here on the y-axis. And this period, again, is upside down compared to the parent function. This would only happen if we had a negative A value, which we don't. Example three, a yo-yo that is attached to a 30 inch long string is rotated at a constant rate. The figure provides a representation of the yo-yo in the XY plane with the direction of rotation indicated. At time t equals zero seconds, the yo-yo begins to rotate. The yo-yo is at the start position in the figure. At time t equals five seconds, the yo-yo has completed two rotations, and the yo-yo is in the same position as it was at time t equals zero. A sinusoidal function is used to model the x-coordinate of the position of the yo-yo as a function of time t in seconds, which of the following functions is an appropriate model for this situation? All four of these answers have a lot in common. They all involve the sine function. Also, they all have the same a value, the same c value, and the same d value. The only thing that's different among them is the b value. So let's calculate the b value and see which one is a match. We have memorized that the b value is equal to two pi divided by the period. But what's the period? The period is the duration of one rotation. However, we are told that after five seconds, the yo-yo has completed 20 rotations. If 20 rotations occur in five seconds, we can find the duration of one rotation by dividing both sides by 20. In other words, one rotation will occur in five divided by 20 seconds. 
5 over 20 reduces to 1 fourth. And remember that one rotation is the period. So the period will equal 1 fourth of a second. Now we are ready to calculate that B value, which will be 2 pi divided by the period. So the B value in this case will be 2 pi divided by 1 fourth of a second. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So b will equal 2 pi times 4. So b is 8 pi. This tells us that the answer is d because this is the only option that has a b value of 8 pi. Example 4, a clock is mounted on the wall and the point P is located at the tip of the minute hand of the clock. The function H represents the height of point P from the ground at time T, where H of T is equal to A times the sine of B times T plus C plus D. In the XY plane, the points H of 0 equals 70 and H at 30 equals 52 represent a maximum value and a minimum value, respectively, on the graph of H. What are the values of A and D? The D value is the middle value of a sinusoidal function. So it is the average of the maximum value and the minimum value. In other words, the D value will be the maximum value plus the minimum value divided by 2. So in this case, D will equal 70 plus 52 divided by 2. 70 plus 52 is 122. So we have 122 divided by 2. So that means D is 61. The A value is closely related to the amplitude. It's the distance between the highest value and the middle value. In other words, the A value will be the maximum value minus the middle value. In this case, the maximum value is 70, and the middle value is the 61 that we just found. So the A value is 9. Example 5. The average monthly temperature in degrees Fahrenheit for a town in central Indiana can be modeled by the sinusoidal function T of M, which equals, well, all of this, for the interval from 1 to 12 months. Based on the model, which of the following is true? Option A says the maximum average monthly temperature is 61.2 degrees Fahrenheit. This cannot be true because we see that the middle value is 61.2. So the maximum value has to be, well, 2.57 degrees above this. So A cannot be the answer. Option B says the maximum average monthly temperature occurs at M equals 1. Focus on this part of the function right here. The sine function oscillates between a maximum value of positive 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. So we're going back and forth between positive 1 and negative 1. So the maximum value of T of M will occur when the sine function is at its maximum value, a value of 1. So the question is, will the sine function have a value of 1 at M equals 1? At m equals 1, this part of the function becomes the sine of pi over 6 times 1 minus 4. This is the sine of negative 3 pi over 6. The 3 over 6 part reduces to pi over 2. So we'll have the sine of negative pi over 2. The negative means that we rotate in the clockwise direction. So negative pi over 2 is right here on the unit circle. And sine is the y value. So the sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. This is actually the lowest value that sine ever is. 
So this will give us the minimum value, not the maximum value. So the answer cannot be B. Option C says the minimum average monthly temperature is 35.5 degrees Fahrenheit. On a sinusoidal function, if you start with the middle value and you subtract the amplitude, that should give you the minimum value. In this case, the middle value is the D value, which is 61.2, and the amplitude is the A value, which is 25.7. 61.2 minus 25.7 is 35.5, so the answer is C. Just for the sake of completeness, we know the answer is not D because we already saw that the minimum average monthly temperature occurred at M equals one month. So it won't be at M equals seven. In fact, seven minus four is three. So at M equals seven, this part of the function will become the sine of three pi over six. This reduces to pi over two and the sine of pi over two is one. This is the maximum value that sine can ever be. So we will have the maximum average monthly temperature at M equals seven, not the minimum. Example six, the function N gives the number of nighttime hours on the first day of a given month on the closed interval from one to 12. The table gives values of n at selected values of t. A sinusoidal regression, y equals a times the sine of bt plus c plus d, with 16 iterations, is used to model these data. What is the maximum number of nighttime hours predicted by the sinusoidal function model? To make the sinusoidal regression model, we need to start by typing this data into a table on the calculator. Hit stat and then hit enter. And let's enter the input values in L1 and the output values in L2. Once you have the data typed in, you're going to hit stat and then switch over to the calculate menu. We're looking for the sinusoidal regression feature which is way down uh, after this number nine. So it's actually quicker to get to it if you scroll up. So it's this option C that we're going to use. Notice it is asking for the number of iterations. In the setup, we were told to use 16 iterations. So let's type 16 right here. Also, you always want to tell the calculator to store your regression model as y1. So come right here and enter y1 by doing alpha, trace, and then enter. Hit enter a few more times to calculate the regression model. Enter and enter. And here it is. So we can look at the graph by hitting zoom six the, this will start us off with a standard 10 by 10 window. We're not quite seeing the top of the graph, so I'm going to adjust the window and raise my Y max to 15. We are asked for the maximum Y value predicted by the regression model. So I'm going to target this maximum value right here using the feature that's found under second trace and maximum is option four. For left bound, just be somewhere to the left of max and hit enter. For right bound, move the pointer to the right of the max and hit enter. For the guess, move the pointer near the max and hit enter. So the maximum value is the Y value, the output value, 11.3328. That is closest to option C. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.